All right, I'm going to do a video tutorial on duplicate printing. Apparently, a lot of people are having issues with it. So, the directions, I don't know, that they're not really thorough, I guess. I mean, for those of us that's been doing printing for a while, we can figure it out. For the new guys, this will make it a lot easier. So, here we go. All right, first, I've got a little things on the bed that you're going to need and some things I want to show you. The things you're going to need is a 2.5 millimeter Allen. You can use the one that came with the printer. I just like mine. You're going to need the long ribbon cable. They, they, they sent you a couple extra ribbon cables. One of them is long. You'll need the long one. You're going to need a ruler of some kind that has metric on it. Millimeters. You're going to need maybe a business card or something. And then these are just something I'm going to talk about for a second. Alright, anytime you're doing printing on a 3D printer, it is important to have a level flat bed, okay? I always use metal. I got these in different lengths. I got three foot ones. I got probably five or six of these in this length. But, let me move that out of the way. I use these to measure with and everything. The edges stay edged. You can check your print bed because some people are saying they're getting bold glass. I put that on there. If you get anything more than a hair of white through it, you might have an issue. I mean, mine, I check at the front, check it in the middle, you know, check it in the back and do it the same way, this way, and just see what you got. I mean, you can see mine flat okay but just check it you're still going to need that ruler that was just something i was telling you to do this is one of the uh bed levelers that paul designed i do have a whole set <clears throat> i have not put them on yet because i have not switched to the aluminum plate i'm still using my glass with my gecko tech plate on top of it right now uh, i'm one of those if it's not broke don't fix it I've got a good level bed right now. I'm not going to mess with it until I need to. Um, when I get ready to put the, low, the aluminum plate on, I've already had him make my offset a little bit thicker so that the aluminum plate and the gecko plate will fit into the clip, or it should. I hope I'm right. If not, I'll have to ask him to make this offset a little more for me. But I have those ready to go. This is what I did when I went to the Gecko plate because what comes with it, what comes with the, even with the G-Max Create, those little clips, but I, I don't like them. Okay, a lot of people don't. <clears throat> I printed these clips to be used with it. You can see them. Let me move this back. You might be able to see that one. There's a little blue clip on this side. Okay. I printed these and I printed the clips to hold everything in place. There are four of these. The two in the front go long ways. The two in the back go like that. They have the hole for the screw and then it's beveled out so the screw sits flat, the head of the screw sits flat down in there. I believe those are like 10 by 15 or 15 by 20 by 40 millimeters long. Okay. And they were all the same height when I printed them. I printed them all, put it on there, and then I moved my head around to see where I was high and low at. This one here was 0.5 millimeters too high. I printed one of these 0.5 millimeters lower, put it on that side. My bed came out true. I got lucky. Well, it came out within 0.1 of a millimeter being true. One tenth of a millimeter. I can work with one tenth of a millimeter. I can take that up in bed leveling or in my offset, but that that's marginal okay you can over extrude your first layer a little bit to make up for that if you have to but i could have went ahead and printed a couple more and got it exact it wasn't worth the trouble that's how i did it if you want to do that hey like i said it didn't have to be 40 long it could have been 20 i just did 40 to give me room to move the clips around because if you put clips on this side you can't put them on the front because of this you got to remember this passes beyond that threaded rod so you got to have clips that are recessed you can use binder clips and just take the little tabs off that you use to squeeze them down with okay you can do that 
but that's what I did here. Now, we'll move the ruler out of the way for a moment. First thing we're going to do, we're going to get to this. I, we're going to go with the assumption you just turned the printer on, we're sitting here, nothing's going on. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to home the printer because until you home the printer initially, because of the BL touch, there's no in stock uh, switches. It will not know where everything's at. This will home it, give everything a zero value, and you will be good. Okay? Alright, so we are homed. We're good. I'm going to bring my Z up a little more. Well, I'll leave it. It, it is what it is. Now, at this point, you can auto level your single extruder and for the average person that hasn't got a good level bed that would probably be a good ideal roughly okay but auto level it if you want to it'll run through i'm not going to do it because i'm running rc8 with mesh leveling it's 20 points i don't want you to sit through it my bed's flat enough i'm not even going to worry about it if i get a failed print from this it's to show y'all what to do i don't care Run your auto leveling. When your auto leveling is done, um, we'll start from there. So once your auto leveling is done, turn off your motors. So this will move around, okay? You can move this by hand, and you can move this by hand. At this point, I use a business card. You can use whatever you use to check the your spacing on your nozzle to your bed. I use a business card just because they're pretty uniform it's pretty simple it's not going to scratch nothing tear nothing up so what you do or what i do i bring this all the way over i lower my z to where that business card just goes under the nozzle between the bed there's just a little bit of a restriction okay then i bring it to the middle i do it again and then i bring it to this side and i do this again now, if I have less resistance on this side or less resistance on this side, at that point, I would turn this threaded rod to adjust that, okay? Once I get it to where I got the same resistance going under on both sides, you're done turning them threaded rods. Do not adjust them rods no more. You're going to move to the front. You're going to do it again, again, again. Do the same in the back. If your resistance is more or less in the front or the back, okay, than it is in the middle, your bed is out of level. Now, your auto leveling will take up for some of that. That's why I told you to go ahead and run it. Because we cannot run auto leveling once we get ready to run a duplicate print because the spacing on this will cause this to crash into the side. So that's why you need it to run auto leveling before we start. Now, if you get that resistance, the best thing you can do is work on leveling your bed, which is what Paul designed those for, or even simpler, print it for those 10 millimeters tall, and then whichever side has more resistance, print that side a little less until you get the resistance the same. Moving forward, we've checked that. Now what you do is you slide this one over. You bring this one over onto the platform. You do the same thing. All positions. Listen, do not adjust these rods if it's different here to here. Okay, you did it on this one. You can't change it for this one because then it changes it for this one. If you have more or less resistance in the same spot in the center, or, you know, along the center axis here, what you have to do you have to take the 2.5 millimeter Allen, loosen your screw up on the side, and take this cover off. You have to take these bolts out of this fan, and then there are two hex nuts, right, well, bolts right there. One there and one right behind that fan right there, okay? You're going to loosen them up about one, two turns maybe. At that time, this head right here, the nozzle, is going to be movable. 
okay it's going to move up and down it shouldn't be hot because it hasn't been plugged in okay if you were using it before we started this make sure it's cool before you start messing with it i don't want you to get hurt but you'll you'll take the fan off you'll loosen the, the hex screw up here and the one right here below it and this nozzle will move up and down you will then take it you'll put it in position you'll put whatever you use to judge your to to get your you know distance feeler gauge whatever you use okay and use a business card you will adjust that nozzle you will tighten these two back up when you tighten these up you turn them clockwise that causes them to push down on that nozzle a little bit that nozzle may come down a little more if it does bring it back up do it again I had to fight it for a little while but it, you will get it in place once you get that done to where you have the same resistance there there and there as you do in this one then you move it around the board you move the board around the bed around whatever you want to call it you move it around okay you should have the exact same because now this is the same height as that one again do not adjust the rods to adjust the height for this you've already done it for this one if you do that it messes this one up once you're done with that <clears throat> you put the fan back on put the screws back in okay do not put the cover on yet at that point we're ready to start setting up our dual nozzle completely here's what you do you take your ruler whatever you're using to measure 200 millimeters I set this down I put this right under the tip of my nozzle I bring this one over and I put it on and mine's in centimeters so I put it on 20 centimeters which is 200 millimeters okay it ain't got to be exact but I'm right there okay then what you do you don't have to have the fan off if you had it off and you wanted to do it before you put it on that's fine you tighten up the belt tensioner or the belt what holds it in place you do this one through the hole in the fan okay that's why you don't have to have the fan off to do this and don't over tighten them you just tighten them good and snug don't wrench them down because you run a risk of cutting into that belt so just good and snug to where it's going to travel and not skip all right just like that so now when i move one they both move gotcha all right you can take your ruler and set it off you're done with the ruler you can now put this back on and we're ready to do the next step i'm going to tighten that screw up so we're good there okay now you want to take the long ribbon cable there was two that come with it one short one's long you want the long one you're going to plug it in on behind here to the connector right next to the one that your extruder is plugged in now so they're right next to each other you're going to take the other end you're going to plug it right into your extruder and the fan comes on okay now these two extruders are being controlled by extruder one now you can check that by going to your preheat heating these up to about 185 90 c if you're using pla and you can just press the tensioner down and push down on it or you can even do the extrude from the controller to see if you get filament extruded okay so at this point we're good everything is set up on the printer i've gone over how you should level your bed you should know that anyway but now you have a better understanding now we're ready to go to the software so uh, I'm just going to move the camera I apologize but we'll just come down to the laptop and here we are so I use Simplify 3D um, most people are using it these days I think it is great software the more I use it the more I like it <clears throat> <clears throat> all right so i load my simplified 3d i've already dropped a little project on there okay it's a little spinner it seems to be the going fad i just needed something simple to show you all that's what i chose um we have it on the bed what we need to do is and this is the, my standard form profile edit your process 
okay? Go up here. Okay, this is a Formbot, this is what I call mine, Formbot T-Rex 2. Save as. Whatever your is, give it a new name. I'm, I'm going to name it Formbot Duplicate Print. And I'm going to click OK. Now it says Formbot Duplicated Print. So now what you got, you got two profiles. I got my Formbot T-Rex 2 and I got my Duplicate Print. Make sure it's Duplicate Print. We're going to go to G-Code. You're going to change your X-axis to 200. That just changed my bed. Okay? I'm going to center that on there. I'm going to go back, and I'm going to pull the process up again and go back to the G-Code. <clears throat> the only thing I did was change the axis to half of the 400. The other two stayed wherever you had them at. Mine was 400, 400, and 470. <clears throat> However you're comfortable. Everything else should be the same as it was in your other profile. Now, also, you cannot do an auto level now because if you do, when that head tries to come over to the right side, it's the right extruder is going to crash because it is attached to the belt now. It is not sliding free. Go to your scripts. We've already honed it, and we've already done the uh, auto level. Take those out of the equation like that or just delete them out however you want to do it I don't care you could leave the home because as long as you did no more than 200 millimeter it will do the the X and Y home and home uh, Z to the center just fine I prefer not to do it because if you don't do 200 if you did 205 or 210 Again, that right extruder is going to crash in the right side, and you're going to start over. <clears throat> so, just get rid of those. I have a command here to turn the LED on. Some of y'all like that. It's up to you. Okay. I'm going to click OK on that. Now, <clears throat> what you're looking at basically is that is what Formbot says your print bed size is. It's still 400, but it's only going to print on 200 millimeters of that. Well, 200 across. So, what it's actually going to print on is the left half of the printer. You are going to be printing, because both extruders are hooked up to be controlled by extruder 1, you're going to print on the left half and the second half at the same time doing the exact same thing. So, instead of printing just one, you're going to actually be printing another one here. Software cannot show that. It does not know that. Okay? Now, if I want it to... I could take that, I could copy it, and I can't believe I just did that. Yeah. I'm going to copy that. I got two of them. And I can center and arrange them. Now, it's going to print four total in the time it takes to print two because it's printing these at the same time. We really don't need to do that for the demo. We're going to remove one. So, it's going to print two in the time it takes to print one. It's saving you half the time doing twice the work. Okay? Again, just verify your settings. Make sure you're set right. I got, I'm using PLA, so there's my PLA setting. Uh, temperature control, 200. We're going to raise that a little bit. I know that one row likes about 205 over the other one. So, cooling. I do it this way. You can do it however you want. <clears throat> you know, I don't do nothing for the first four layers. Then I come up to 75%. And then I, I usually go to like 90 to 100% by the time I get a little higher. So, that's up to you. Like I said, there's my Z offset that I add a little bit to. And don't put this in here for you. This is whatever your Z offset for your printer is. If you hard coded the whole thing in firmware, that's great. Leave this zero. Whatever yours is, whatever you've been using, leave it that way. I do that on mine. Again, make sure that your G28 and your G29 are out of the equation. You can delete them, do whatever you want with them. I put the same little parentheses or yeah. They're reamed out of the thing basically. So I'm ready to print this. 
I click on prepare to print oh yeah I had a I had a large uh, you might double check that too I, I really don't need nothing super super fancy on my skirt I like to do two or three skirt just because that primes the nozzles real good before it starts to print you can do whatever you want uh, really don't need a loose shield prepare to print and there we go I'm going to say print by USB because I got it plugged into the laptop normally I print from SD card or Octoprint or Wi-Fi depending on what computer I'm on so I hit print it's going to start preheating the extruders which it already has <clears throat> now at this point we're just going to go back to the printer get, so you can start to see it start printing and again I'm sorry I'm doing it this way but you know unfortunately for me I, uh, I'm the sole owner of a company and I don't get a lot of time to myself I don't have a lot of time to do video editing but I did want to show you all how to do this so we're heating the extruder we're now at 100 C we got to go to 205 before it starts And for anybody that was curious about any of this, like I said, you can just do these little blocks, put them under there, use uh, binder clips, you know, like these, to clamp that down. You just have to get far enough back here to where you clear at zero. That's why I printed these. We're at 185C. Alright, PID tuning is turned in and it's slowed down the heating process. We're at 200. Okay, we're two temp. Right there. There we go. This is part of my settings. I always raise it 15 millimeter. I do a little extra extrusion. And that was the printer doing a home on its own. I have it set in firmware. Luckily, I know my spacing. Like I said, I do that to prime the nozzle. That's just where it was priming. That's part of the skirt. It won't even affect the print. But that's why I do it, to get the filament flowing real well before it starts to print. And that's how you do one. So, um, I thank you for watching. I hope this helps you.